Welcome to another episode of our weekly update of Starbase Texas and Cape Canaveral, Florida, brought to you by La Padre. As always, we will be sharing the latest news and developments from both of these locations. On Friday, a tweet came from Cameron County Sheriff's Office informing us of an unscheduled closure of Boca Chica Beach due to weather conditions causing Highway 4 to be underwater. Our own WizKid also grabbed this last image while leaving Starbase. On Monday, the newly delivered gas vaporizer was relocated at the orbital tank farm in preparation for its final installation. The next day, the vaporizer was lifted upright, moved into place, and installed along the front of the orbital tank farm. On Tuesday morning, a self-propelled modular transporter moved Booster 10's methane downcomer into Mega Bay, where it was later installed in the Super Heavy's liquid oxygen tank. That afternoon, down at the launch site, crews worked to backfill behind a new concrete wall that was built across the bottom of the berm between the launch mount and the tank farm. Thanks to Mauricio at RGV Aerial Photography, we can also show you the overhead view of this work. This new wall is likely to stop debris from ramping up the berm behind it and launching towards the tank farm and beyond. Once the backfilling was complete, rebar was lifted the top of the new wall for crews to place in preparation for finishing it with a layer of concrete. Over here in the corner of the SPMT storage area, new parts of what is believed to be a new kind of ship load spreader are being staged and assembled for use in the near future. Thursday morning, an SPMT drove by rover cam and the build site on its way down Highway 4 to the Massey's test site. RGV Aerial Photography was able to provide us with an updated view of this facility. On the east side of the site, three new horizontal storage tanks have now been installed on their bases. Nearby, crews are disconnecting the straps on the Can Crusher's top hat, possibly indicating that S26.1 has finished its testing campaign. And on the west side of the site, parts are being staged for assembly of a new crane. That afternoon, we saw a fresh round of testing for Booster 9, following a problem-solving trip to the pad by what is functionally SpaceX's own red team. The day's tests eventually kicked off with the filling of the vehicle's liquid oxygen tank with cryogenic fluids before later detanking. And shortly after, as the last of the frost was melting off of the LOX tank, cryo was loaded into the methane tank before eventually detanking and finishing Booster 9's second set of cryogenic proof testing. Switching over to SpaceX's activities in Florida, on Friday morning, crews offloaded the fairing halves from the Starlink 4-37 and O3B Empower 1 and 2 launches. Later that afternoon, Tug Crosby Skipper towed a shortfall of Gravitas out of Port Canaveral in support of the Starlink 5-1 launch. On Monday evening, fairing recovery vessel Doug also headed out to sea in support of the same launch. On Tuesday, B-1058, the current flight leader of SpaceX's Falcon 9 fleet, was laid horizontally on the transport stand for its trip back to Hangar X. And finally, in the early hours of Wednesday morning, Falcon 9 Booster 1062 sent another 54 Starlink satellites to orbit. And with a final Vandenberg launch, this brings SpaceX up to an astonishing 61 launches this year. This doubles last year's record and beats this year's goal. And that concludes another weekly update of Starbase Texas and Cape Canaveral, Florida, brought to you by La Padre. We wish you a happy new year and hope you will continue to join us for all the exciting events and updates coming up in the year ahead. Thank you again for tuning in and see you again next week.